look around the room and just gaze through the room with your soft eye and release a sacred and silent blessing for all of the beings that will hear this day. Overflow section, you as well, and the live streamers. We presence them into the room. We presence our ancestors in the room. We presence the angelic realm. We presence all of our spiritual teachers, past, present, and future in the room. And we become very present in the room as we release this prayer for all of the beings here, that they may be free. And then do one other thing. Look at someone to your right or to your left and just look them up and down a little bit. <laughs> and, and just say, oh my God. You are, you are magnificent. There's so much beauty in you. There's so much, in you. There's so much love in you. There's so much, love There's so much power and joy in you. So Infinite you. potential is all in you. And you're just getting started. Let's come together and change the world for the better. Let's do this Let's do together yes. in the here and now. And so it is. Amen. And so you are indeed touching and agreeing in a field that is rich and as real, for it's filled to overflowing with a divine love, a divine peace, a divine well-being. And so this field is vibrating higher than the field of lack and limitation, fear, doubt, and worry, and separation that runs through the gamut of the human experience. You're in another field now. You have heard come out from among them, and you have done that today to vibrate in a much higher awareness of who and what you really are and to touch and agree in that frequency so that your personal law who and what you really are, your personal law, is, becomes a dynamic law of love and beauty and intelligence and well-being, and that the universal law of mind and action finds you. And based on your personal law, based on the frequency and the vibration that you're releasing, more good flows into your life to circulate, to share, and to shine, and that you become bold enough to let your light so shine before men and women that when they see you, they see the presence of God Almighty, all beauty, all joy that sent you. You're in that field of love and beauty and intelligence. As we begin the theme of this month, the theme is uh, uh, from uh, the conspiracy for mediocrity to the divine conspiracy. First, we have to acknowledge there is a conspiracy for mediocrity. We're here in a high-tech sometimes low-touch society in which you are giving, giving messages on a regular basis as to how unworthy you are, as to how you need something outside of yourself to be happy, to complete yourself. You're giving messages uh, 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 on a regular basis, how, how there's something within you that's wrong. Sometimes it comes from even religion itself that tells you that there's some kind of an original sin that you're trying to overcome when in truth you know that the presence of God recreated itself in its own image after its own likeness and cannot make a mistake with you. So there's only an original blessing. There's original infinite potential, an original opportunity for you to express itself yet there is a conspiracy for mediocrity that seeks to dumb you down, that seeks to uh, keep you small, that keeps to seek you, keep, seeks to keep you in fear and doubt and worry, so that you didn't have to, you didn't have to buy the pharmaceuticals uh, uh, that are being produced uh, to have just a little bit of peace. Not you, not here, not now. Listen, this conspiracy for mediocrity, you are sometimes you're participating in it. Sometimes uh, you're participating in it by not thinking, poor thinking. In other words, uh, uh, what some people think is thinking is really a, shuff a shuffling of information, the same information they had the day before yesterday. It's an information shuffling. That's not thinking. That's not thinking. Some people have the same opinions and perceptions and points of view, and they have it ready to serve. And when any circumstance shows up, they have that opinion ready. They have that point of view ready. They have that perception ready. That's not thinking. That's information shuffling. Thinking is opening yourself up to insight and revelation, open yourself up through spiritual technology to have an insight about that which is real, that which is forever, that which is eternal, until it begins to take over your life so that you have a new thought. Now, we're a part of a, a new thought tradition. We should have one every now and then, <laughs> a, a, a new thought. 
It's called inspiration. It's called inspiration. And so you're participating in the conspiracy for mediocrity when you are not thinking, when you are staying the same and trying to change the world or other people. That's not thinking. And then you participate in this conspiracy for mediocrity by having poor inquiry. Rather than an appreciative inquiry, you have a poor inquiry. You have questions that deplete you. You walk around on a regular basis and you ask, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with life? What's wrong with them? What's, what's the matter? What's wrong? And interestingly enough, the universal law will answer any question that you ask. And so if you have a, of a poor inquiry, it will begin to go through the database of human consciousness and begin to tell you what's wrong with you. you you've inherited something from your ancestors. Uh, you, you've got bad religion. Uh, it'll, it'll begin to give you all of these excuses that you have had in your life uh, from the things that you have done or not done and give you an answer that will become an excuse to stay exactly as you are. We are not here to have poor inquiry. We're here to have a question in which we're asking on a continual basis, uh, you know, what good is here? What love is here? What potential is here? What good is here seeking to express by means of me? The universal law will answer that question just as well. You see? We participate in this conspiracy for mediocrity when we let go of our gratitude and replace it with complaining. When, in fact, your complaining becomes more than your gratitude, the vibratory frequency that you release, uh, it, it, it shrinks your perception. And so that all that you see are roadblocks, hindrances, not enough scarcity and lack. When there is gratitude, when there is thanksgiving, when you begin to uh, strengthen your spiritual muscles and stay in the frequency of gratitude and thanksgiving, doorways open up for you. And that universal law begins to act according to that frequency of gratitude and thanksgiving. And as you've heard me say from time to time, the universe will say to you in substance, boy, girl, you continue to be grateful and I'm going to give you something to be grateful for. It will rise up. But you're participating in mediocrity, poor thanking, poor inquiry, lack of gratitude. But there's a divine conspiracy. There is a presence that's never an absence. The presence of God, almighty, all beauty, and all joy, and all intelligence. The presence that is behind the scenes that is conspiring for your liberation, conspiring for your freedom, con conspiring for your awakenedness. For what purpose? So that it can come into its own as your life. That the presence of God can know itself as you can know itself as you. Now understand this, you looked each other up and down. You shared with each other about the beautiful uniqueness that each and every beingness is. Now this is not a throwaway sentence, this is the truth. The spirit of the living God has never done a do-over, never repeated itself because it's infinite, never made a mistake. That means each and every one of you are a one-of-a-kind, unique expression of a singular manifestation of a cosmic good that's forever and ever unfolding, okay? So you have a mandate to reflect and to reveal the presence of God as only you can, okay? So, so this presence wants to know itself as you. The presence of God know, is, is intelligence itself. It already knows everything, but it wants to know itself as you. So therefore, in order for you to break free from the conspiracy of mediocrity, you don't need to just merely be enthralled by the presence of God. You've got to be involved with the presence of God. You have to move from being enthralled to being involved. So you can be enthralled by the billions of stars in the galaxy. You can be enthralled by the grains of sand that are uncountable and immeasurable. You can be enthralled by the, the grass growing out of the cement and continue to express divine life. You can be enthralled by the beauty of the presence that is everywhere in its fullness, but you must become involved with this presence through your intentionality, through your gratitude, through your prayer, through your affirmation, through your meditation, through your life visiting, through your sacred service, through your holy fellowship, through your sacred classes. You have to become so involved that you move from merely being enthralled so that this presence becomes active in you and knows itself as your life. 
In other words, as the topic would indicate, are you ready for you? Are you ready for you? Because uh, there's a, a you that has been prefabricated by society, parental fantasies, societal fantasies, a constellation of shifting personalities that have arisen out of time based on circumstance and situations, coping mechanisms and, and defense mechanisms. But there is a you, an I am presence that emanates from the mind of God. Are you ready for you? Now, the Course of Miracles tells us that, that readiness is the prerequisite for accomplishment. That there has to be a vibrational readiness for who and what we really are. We've got to be ready. And in order to be ready, you have to finally come to terms and embrace the word greatness. Some of you are shying away from it already. It's like, oh, I don't want to be great. I just, you know, I just want to just kind of pay my rent and make it through the day, you know. I, I'm not really into greatness. Just, just let me just, you know, just slink on through life and just kind of not make a lot of mistakes so I can get to a future heaven. You know, I don't want to be great. And that's because uh, you don't know what greatness is. You, are des you have greatness within you. Greatness is finding and fulfilling your purpose. That's what greatness is. It is finding and fulfilling your real purpose as only you can do and be it. And so you want to begin, as I'm speaking right now, you want to begin to feel into the vibration of being great. Not mediocre. Not just making do. You want to feel into the vibration of being great and allowing that power of the Spirit to move through you. Say with me, if you will, I'm willing to be great. Come what may. I'm willing to be great. I'm willing to be great. Come, what may. Come what may. Now, many people are, are unconsciously afraid of greatness because they're afraid of the stones that will be thrown at them. They're afraid of, of, of the criticism. They're, you know, many women have an, have an unconscious uh, holding back of their greatness because uh, in the lineage of women, when men, women became great and powerful, uh, they were burned at the stake. Many men are afraid of greatness because they don't want to stand out. They just want to just kind of hang in the background, you see? But there is a divine evolutionary impulse within you, the presence of God, seeking to become conscious of its own life as your life. Therefore, at some point, you have to slough off mediocrity and you have to embrace greatness in the same sentence as your name. You have to absolutely embrace it as a frequency. Say, I'm great. I'm willing to be great. I'm willing to be great. I am willing to be great. And then, in order for you to be ready to be you, you have to embrace the word genius. You got to embrace that word. You know, people are always, again, being enthralled by others' genius, but they're not involved with their own genius. There's a genius in you. There's something that you have to do that nobody else can do better than you or the way that you can do it according to your soul artistry. There is a genius within you. That means that you're gonna pay attention, you're going to have dominion over attention, so you're able to hold your attention for a period of time so that that which you really want in life, that which you really want to express, you're holding your attention in there and then following the dictates of your soul to do exactly what is necessary to flesh out, to outpicture, to manifest the genius that is within you so that your life is not lived in vain. And as you look back over the course of your existence, when it is time for you to cross the great vibrational divide, you will not look back and say you lived a mediocre life as you followed all the rules, as you, didn't, you didn't go for it, you didn't express yourself, you walked in littleness. No, the biggest sin that, one of the biggest sins that you could ever participate in is to participate in the squelching of the genius that is within you and practicing littleness as a way of life. You, you, I'm talking about you. Are you ready for you? Yes. If you're ready for you, you're embracing greatness, finding and fulfilling your purpose. We all have the same purpose, that's to reflect the infinite, but we all have different missions in the way we're to do it. It's only we can do it, you see. To embrace your genius. And when you're finding and fulfilling your purpose, You've got to ask, what do I really want? 
Now, you remember what Mark Twain said. Mark, Mark Twain said, I can teach anybody how to get what they want. The problem is most people don't know what it is. <laughs> most people don't know what they want. They're, they're taking their cues uh, from the society. They're taking their cues from commercials. They're taking commues, c- c- their cues from something outside of themselves so they really don't know what their soul wants, their soul desire. You have to ask, what do I really want? And you have to ask that question on such a regular basis that it takes you and refines you and begins to allow you to hear your soul giving you that call for greatness, reminding you the reason you took this human incarnation, the reason you said yes to making the big leap. And remember, you did choose to be here even though you think from time to time that you were accidentally brought here, that it wasn't your fault, that your your parents' fault. You should. You never wanted to be here. That's a lie you tell yourself as an excuse to not being great. You are here. Your soul will begin to tell you. You'll listen. And then you'll be able to say, I know exactly what I want. I know exactly where I want to make a difference on the planet. I know exactly the gift I want to share. I know exactly the gift I need to cultivate, the talent I need to hone so that I can express myself. I know exactly where I need to become genius so that no individual can do it exactly the way I can and express myself. You gotta know, you gotta know, you gotta know what you really, really, really want. Not the immature one thing, but that depth of soul desire. And then you have to, if you're ready for you, you have to embrace the vibration of grace. Just just feel into that grace. Grace, givenness, and givingness of the spirit. The total givenness and the total givingness of the presence of God. You can't make grace happen, but you can become available to grace. In other words, as Tyler was singing about giving up his whole blood and going into a total surrender, there's a moment where we become totally available, surrendered, open. Receptive. In other words, our availability quotient goes up for the grace of the Spirit to take over our life. This, when we begin to contemplate grace, I'm, I, I'm contemplating it. And I was thinking about uh, when I asked for help uh, a few weeks ago when I was on the ocean and couldn't get in for that, from that riptide, and everything got quiet. And, 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 and then there was that, that swell of wave came, and then the next one, that was grace. It was, a, it was a willingness. My body was totally exhausted. But the grace of, of, as I asked for help, the receptivity to grace came. You want to be available to grace. Let go of your hard-headedness. Let go of your willfulness. And exchange it for willingness. And when you exchange willfulness, which creates walls, for willingness, which create ways and openings, you become a candidate for the grace of the Spirit. So check this out. Greatness, genius, grace. Those are vibrational frequencies that lead to an ecstasy and a bliss and a joy that doesn't come from conditions, doesn't come from time and space. It's intrinsic to your nature and comes from the very depth of your being. But some of you can't handle bliss. You can't handle too much joy. You can't handle too much happiness. You can't handle it. It's too much for you. You you like it just meted out in a certain way. I'm going to be happy on my birthday. (laughs) Christmas, Hanukkah. I'm going to be, you have special days set aside. Nothing wrong with those special days. But at some point, as you begin to embrace your genius and begin to embrace your greatness and you begin to be available, your AQ is raised. IQ, intelligent quotient. AQ, availability quotient. As your availability quotient is raised through deep surrender and soulful prayer, you, the, the vibration you're able, to, you're able to maintain a level of joy and gratitude and thanksgiving for longer and longer periods of time. And you know you don't have to apologize for it. You don't have to apologize for being happy. You don't have to apologize for being in joy, regardless of conditions. 
I was sharing in the earlier service, there was a, a woman who frequented Agape for a period of time for a number of years ago, and whenever she was about to get serious with an, on the dating scene, she would always bring the gentleman to Agape just to see if there was a vibrational match. And I'll always remember her telling me she brought the young man to Agape. It was a beautiful service. Everything was wonderful. But he told her, I, I can't come back here because when I leave, I'm feeling too good. When I leave my church, I feel bad. I'm supposed to feel bad when I leave church. I'm supposed to be a, a sinner and, 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 every, and all the things that are wrong with me. So I can't come back to you guys. So, of course, the dating stopped. But listen. True story. Listen, as you're becoming ready for you, you're becoming ready to be able to hold and maintain an awareness of the presence that's never an absence. You're able to hold and maintain awareness of joy regardless of conditions. We're not saying conditions are always going to be to the optimum. But we are saying this. In the Zen technology, you have heard me teach this if you've been in class with me, that a Zen master will give an individual a, a koan or a riddle that can't be solved intellectually. There has to be a moment of transcendence in which you expand your awareness, and then in that expanded awareness, you become aware of the answer that was so obvious, but you couldn't see it from a larger perspective. The challenges in our life are the riddles that we are creating from our soul that we can't solve or figure out with our mind. We have to expand our awareness in order to transcend them and ultimately dissolve them. So you're not trying to live a challenge-free life. You're seeking to move through your challenges with a level of elegance, knowing that they're bringing you a gift that will allow you to transcend that limited perception that's causing the challenge in the first place. Now, when you wake up every single day and to the best of your ability, some days you'll be better than others, to the best of your ability, you bring forth the consciousness of gratitude. To the best of your ability, you embrace uh, that there is greatness within you. To the best of your ability, you embrace that there's an unfolding genius within you. To the best of your ability, moment by moment, you become aware that there's something called grace, the givingness of the spirit that you can't manipulate, but you can be available to. It's not gross. It's quiet. It's here all the time. You don't notice it sometimes because the mind is so busy and you're so much in the future or in the past. And if you're in the future or in the past, you're too tense. <laughs> I just had to say it. It was low-hanging fruit. I had to pick it. <laughs> and if you're too tense, past or future, you're coming into the present moment. And you're embracing gratitude. You're embracing greatness, genius, grace. And you're readying yourself. Remember, readiness is the prerequisite for accomplishment. You're vibrationally becoming ready for the real you. And when the, as the real you emerges, it upsets the life that the previous you had to get held together. It, 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 it messes up those plans sometimes. And the way it was held together. And when that real you begins to emerge, it's authentic. It's unique. And as you're ready for you, excuses dissolve. And you can take one intention, one reason to be successful with a capital S, one reason to be healthy, one reason to be happy, and place your attention there in all of the power will start to flow right there. You can plaster your wall with excuses, or you can take one reason. The entire presence will start to focus right there. 
and that one reason will become a doorway, an opening. And you will become you. The greatest thing in life is when you become your real self. The greatest, the greatest, the greatest. And believe you me, there's nothing intrinsically wrong with you. There's nothing that you're missing. It's all right here. All that you could want and hope for and desire is within you. You have to set it free. You've got 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 to set it free. So right now, take a breath. Release. Embrace the feeling tone of greatness. The finding, fulfilling your purpose, your soul desire. Just ask to yourself right now, what is, what is my mission? Just put it out there so that it will come to you in a dream. Feel into the word genius. Ask yourself, take a breath here. Release. What is my genius? Where does my genius lie? You're beginning to just sneak up on embrace that there's a genius within you. Take a breath. Wrap your attention around the vibratory. You can re release it as well. <laughs> around the feeling tone of grace. This is just the total givingness of the spirit. The grace of God. The grace note. The spirit, the space between movement, grace, and feel into your receptivity to grace. Now ask, what do I really want? What does my soul really want? And just be receptive to that. And as you go through the course of your day, as you even go into your dream time, be available to the leaning and the tendency towards greatness, genius, availability to grace, and what your soul wants. Mm. The baby was screaming out, saying, I know what I want. <laughs> I hope you do. <laughs> Let's turn within in this moment. Come with me. There's Dr. Homer Johnson would say, come, up, come upstairs with me right now. Come into the upper room. Come into the higher frequency. Come into the secret place of the Most High. Come into an ever-expanding awareness of our oneness with the Spirit of the living God. Come with me now. Turn within, which means turn away from the world of effects and circumstances and situations, people, places, and things. Turn within with me. Now let us begin with thanksgiving. Find something to be grateful for right now, something to be thankful for right now. And let this be the beginning of our prayer work. We begin in thanksgiving. Jesus simply said, I give thanks because I know that thou hearest me always. He began with thanksgiving. I give thanks because I know that thou hearest me always. Then he reached through the ethers and asked permission from Lazarus, do you want to come back, dude, or not? He said, yeah. I said, okay, come forth. Look into your life and say, that, I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. I know that the universal law hears what I'm thinking all the time. So I'm hanging out in gratitude right now. I know the law hears me always. I know the presence 
hears me always. The cells of my body temple hear what I'm thinking right now. The organs, the actions, the functions. My life hears me always. So now it's hearing a vibration of thanksgiving and gratitude which allows the perceptual windows to open up and now I can see more clearly. I can see the presence is everywhere. Oh, everywhere. Oh, everywhere. God is everywhere. Omnipresent everywhere. And because the presence is everywhere, it must be where I am. It cannot be everywhere but not here. If it is here and everywhere. I'm at one with the presence of God. That's not blas blaspheming the presence. The only way we blaspheme the presence is to limit its operation and expression through us. We're not here to blaspheme the presence. We're here to let it sing through us and shine through us and give through us and live through us and sing and dance through us and be itself as us. So we have a sense of unity with the presence. Fires up our intelligence, its intelligence. Fires up our love, its love. Fires up our peace, its peace. Fires up our joy, its joy. And in this sense of unity, one with the presence, the word that is spoken is a word of God, an announcement, a declaration, an affirmation. A vibratory law that only knows its own fulfillment. I speak it. With the authority of one knowing that all that there is is a manifestation of the only thing that is, which is the presence of God, I speak the word for each of us that represents the one of us that we may be free today. Yes. Are you willing to be free? Yes. I speak the word for our freedom, our liberation. I speak the word for our health and healing and wholeness and well-being, wellness, strength, vitality, vigor. I speak the word for a dynamic abundance and harmonizing prosperity. I speak the word for the opulence and the elegance of the universe to take over our life. I speak the word that divine intelligence moves through us in a language, in a way that we can understand. I speak the word that divine wisdom and guidance moves through us. I speak the word that we may rise up, hear the calling of our soul, fulfill the desire of our soul, in anger, the realm of ever-expanding good, which is another name for heaven, on earth, as it is ha, in the mind of the infinite. Are you with me? Are you with me? Come on. Come on. Will you be made whole? Will you be whole? Will you be in joy? Will you reveal the peace? Oh my God, I think I'm getting the sacred yes here. I think the yes is high. The surrender is real. The availability is now. Take the breath. Release. Ricky, give him a, give him a, give him a little taste. A vibrational taste. What am I do? What am I to feel? I am like a child And you are with me still 
against the lower frequencies of doubt and worry and fear. Our immunity is expanded. And now we embrace each other. We embrace those who have called in for prayer. We embrace those who have sent in letters and emails and called our prayer ministry. We're holding them in prayer right now. And they include Linda Lloyd's son, Skyler. She just got the message that he's in the hospital right now. Right where he is is the power and the presence and the love of God. 
we surrender our entire being to knowing the health and wholeness and harmony for Brother Skyler, Rocky Valencia's mom, Evelyn, and Jake Jardine's father, Bob Harvey, and Jessica Wynn's complete healing, and Carl Warren, perfect surgery. Mark Paul, perfect recovery from his surgery, and Reverend Cheryl Ward's sister, Aurelia. Continued prayer for our brother, Reverend Devon Original Morgan Gale, Anna Marie's aunt, Zia Maria, and Brenda Abdul Hahim Alim for her father, Harold. That's our head usher. Continue to hold her in prayer. Lisa Michelle and her sister, Catherine, for Catherine's fiance, David. Just a couple of more names. These names are for individuals whose family members or friends who have crossed over to the other side and know more now about life eternal than we do. Miriam Green's family and her family for her cousin Carolyn, Brenda Hall Woods, for Lois, Patricia, and Bertha. Mm. Laura Robb for mother Barbara, and Betty Ann Shen for her father Warren, Lucy, Maddie, Harrison for her husband, father Mickey. Brenda G and the Newman family for Francis, their sweet dog. We give thanks in this moment. We feel good about the word spoken. Something wonderful is occurring. Something magnificent is taking place. Something marvelous is happening. Say it. Say something wonderful is happening. Something marvelous is happening. Something beautiful is taking place. Now we are vibrationally ready. Now we're vibrationally ready. And we, we give thanks and we let it be. Now and unto forevermore, knowing that as the word is spoken, does not come back void, but does return fulfilled thereof. Filled full of divine spirit. Ha! It's already returned. It's here. It's us, it's now, and so it is. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen.